Hello and welcome to Marketing91.com. Let's start with introduction to public debt. Public debt refers to loans raised by governments. Such debt may be internal or external. Internal debt refers to public's loan floated within a country, whereas external debt refers to a country's obligations to foreign governments, foreign nationals or international institutions. If taxation finance is unavailable to fund government expenditure, a government seeks debt finance. Role of public debt is Smoothing out tax rates Macroeconomic stabilization Financing war or other emergency expenditure Meeting a part of current expenditure for developing human capital or increasing productivity Remunerative capital formation by government for lending and for equity investments and Filling saving investment gap limitations of public debt are service charges on public debt may increase inequality and can be used unproductively types of public debt are productive and unproductive voluntary and compulsory debt internal and external debt short-term medium-term and long-term debt redeemable and irredeemable debt and funded and unfunded debt now let's understand productive and unproductive debts productive debts these debts are raised to enhance the productive capacity of an economy if the debt money is invested in constructing railways irrigation projects power plants and so on the productive capacity of an economy is enhanced and the government receives continuous income such loans are self-liquidating. They are repaid within the lifetime of property and therefore do not burden the community. Next is unproductive or deadweight debts. Debts that do not add to the productive capacity of an economy. Such debts are not necessarily self-liquidating. Payments towards interest and the principal amount may have to be raised from other revenue sources, usually taxation. Therefore, such debts burden the community. Next is voluntary and compulsory debts. Voluntary debt. Generally, public loans are voluntary in nature and the government announces the floating of such debt. Governments float loans by issuing certificates, bonds and other such instruments. Individuals, banks and other financial institutions lend to the government willingly by purchasing such instruments. Compulsory debt. Compulsory loans are raised coercively. Their occurrence is rare in modern public finance unless there are exenuating circumstances such as war or crisis. The rate of interest on such loans may be low. Next is internal and external debt. This classification is based on the place of origin of a loan. Internal debt is raised within a country and is funded mostly by the country's own citizens and institutions. It is repayable only in the domestic currency. Such a loan implies income and wealth redistribution within the country. Therefore, it has no direct money burden. It may be voluntary or compulsory. External debt is raised from foreign countries or international institutions and is repayable in foreign currencies. An external loan initially involves transfer of resources from foreign countries to the borrowing country. However, interest and principal amount repayments imply resource transfer in the reverse direction. Such debt helps fund various developmental programs in developing and underdeveloped countries and is typically voluntary. The next type is short, medium and long-term debt. Short-term debt. Such debt matures within 3 to 9 months. Medium-term debt. The maturity period of a medium-term debt between those of short and long-term loans. The rate of interest is intermediate and such debt is typically raised to fund welfare programs. Long-term debt. Long-term debt has a majority period of 10 years or more. The rate of interest is high. Such debt is used to fund developmental programs and meet other long-term needs of public authorities. Next is redeemable and irredeemable debts. Redeemable debts. In the case of redeemable debts, governments promise to pay the debt on some future date. These loans are terminable. Irredeemable debts. In this case, the borrowing government does not fix a definite date for final repayment, but it promises regular interest payments. 
Therefore, the government earmarks funds only for interest payment. Such debts are likely to become perpetual and are therefore considered undesirable. The maturity period of irredeemable debts is not fixed. Funded and unfunded debts Funded debt has majority periods ranging from at least 12, when issued, to up to 30 years or more. The borrowing government is obliged to pay a fixed sum of interest, subject to an option to repay the principal. The government may repay such debt before maturity under favourable market conditions. In unfunded debt, the borrower is obliged to pay the loan at a set due date with interest. The maturity period is comparatively short, around a year, and the rate of interest is low. Such debt is raised to fund temporary government needs. Moving on to burden of public debt. Public debt constitutes a government's financial obligation or liability. The burden of public debt involves repayment of principal amount with interest and it is usually passed on to citizens by means of taxes. Debt burden is measured as a ratio of outstanding debt to GNP. The burden of public debt is analyzed by its nature, that is, whether such debt is productive or unproductive, internal or external, or the debt burden is on the present generation or future generations. The first type is burden of internal debt. Internal debt is owed to self, that is, creditors and debtors are from the same country. The effects of internal debt burden are as follows. It increases inequality. It adversely affects people's ability and desire to work, save and invest. It shifts purchasing power from the younger to the older generation. It is a burden of war financing. It is a burden of unproductive debt. And it also leads to decreased private investment. The next type is burden of external debt. External debt implies borrowing from foreign countries. In a case where resources are scarce, such debt allows for resource inflow from outside to supplement existing domestic resources, which allows the government to invest in various projects. The burden arising from external debt is as follows. It is a direct money burden and real burden. It is also an indirect money burden and real burden. There is also the burden of unproductive foreign debt. There is a burden of foreign currency and domination by creditor country. Next is shifting of debt burden, public debt and future generations. Factors affecting shifting of burden are as follows. Productive and unproductive loans. Loans raised for productive purposes may not create burden on future generations because such loans lead to the creation of assets and increase the productive capacity of an economy. However, if used for unproductive purposes or emergencies, such as war, the burden of such debt will be passed on to future generations. Sacrificing current consumption or investment. Burden shift is contingent on whether the present generation repays debts by sacrificing current consumption investment. If repayments are made by reducing current consumption, future generations will not bear debt burden. However, if repayments are funded by cutting down investment, future generations will bear debt burden. Short-term and long-term loans. Short-term loans are repaid by the current generation and the burden is not passed on to future generations. In the case of long-term loans, the shifting of debt burden will be contingent on whether such debt is self-liquidating or dead weight. Public debt management is the process of formulating and executing a strategy for managing a government's debt to raise the required funding, achieve its risk and cost objectives and meet any other debt management goals such as developing and maintaining an efficient market for government securities. It helps to reduce borrowing costs in many ways. A balanced securities composition contains few alternative sources of finance. It helps develop the domestic financial market, which increases the resilience of an economy. It also lowers a country's vulnerability to contagion and financial risks. Framework for public debt management includes Debt management objectives and coordination. The main objective of debt management is meeting financing needs and payment obligations at the lowest possible terms. Transparency and accountability. Objectives should be defined clearly and disclosed publicly. Institutional framework. A legal framework that specifies how to borrow and issue new debt, invest and transact on behalf of the government should be in place. Debt strategy and risk management. 
an effective debt strategy should be implemented and portfolio risks should be cut by altering the structure of debt. Efficient market for government securities. Debt managers, central banks and the finance ministry should work closely with market participants and regulators for ensuring an efficient market. The broad principles of debt management are Realizing low interest cost for servicing debt Satisfying investor needs Coordinating among public debt, fiscal and monetary policies and funding short-term debt into long-term debt. Thank you.